Well, here we go. This is the watch list. My name is Russ Matthews with Real Dialogue. And I'm Laura Bennett from Hope 1032. And boy, do we have, we, we don't have as many films today, but we have some big ones that we're kind of going through to discuss. Yeah, today. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, the new Pixar one, Elemental. That's right. So, there's, I mean, there's plenty going on in these ones. There's so much going on. And, and I think that it's a great one, especially as we're kind of looking ahead to all the different you know, school holidays and things going on. Are these things really worthwhile considering? Mm. Or which ones are for families? So, we'll be able to kind of look at it and so uh but I, i'm kind of curious i'm going to kind of flip the script here a little bit we just came off the sydney film festival did you enjoy it mm. did you enjoy the, the time at the sydney film festival i mean sydney film festival's massive there was over 250 films that they had as part of this year's festival no i did not get to watch all no, of them no i watched about four that were included as part of the festival i would have loved to have seen more because i think they have such a variety of films Represented. I mean, it's a little while since the the festival wrapped up now, but the the experience of going and seeing cinema from all over the world, yeah, and getting to see stories that you're not necessarily going to see in the major, you know, cinema releases. And then they do ones like Elemental and uh, Indie were both part of Sydney they were. Film Festival yeah. screenings, but they'll obviously have bigger releases. So I enjoyed the ones that I did get to go and see. One of them was Carmen. That was right. a standout. It's a story kind of based in dance weirdly enough but then it like it uses dance as an expression of a more multicultural story yeah so i enjoyed that one but, all right fantastic yeah yeah. Uh, yeah i got the one that really was a standout um red white and brass was the true story of the this tongan brass band that was able to play before the world cups based on a true story mm. Lovely film, just a lot of fun, and also just to be able to see the Tongan culture, it's not something you necessarily get to see a whole lot of, and uh, so it's just really an enjoyable time. Well, as far as uh, kind of supporting the arts, mm -hmm. we're gonna start right in on Elemental. I don't know if you wanna do, yeah. if you wanna talk well, about it a little bit? sure. I've been trying to fill my father's shoes, but I never once asked what I wanted to do. It's sort of like an, an art inspired by life. So it's directed right. by a man named Peter Son, and he is an Asian American, and he lived in New York City. That's where he grew up. And so he takes his experience coming from a migrant family, or at least part of his family sure. heritage involves that, moving into America the way that the culturally there was a level of assimilation needed, and in some respects that didn't happen. There right. was a bit of cultural clash in parts. So he's taken his upbringing and all of those things and put them into this animated story about the uh, the city called it's Element City. Element City. Element City, where all of these different elements, water, wind, fire, etc., they live in this giant city and you've got this character named Amber who is the daughter of a fire family. Right. They move into Element City. She meets a guy who's from the, the water world. Right. And it's like, can they be friends? Could they maybe fall in love? How do water and fire coexist? And so there's a beautiful story in that, but you've also, understanding the perspective the director comes from, yeah. you've kind of got that uh, cultural heritage side mixed in with what is a children's movie about how different people from different backgrounds, different makeups coexist. Yeah, totally. I, I, did you kind of feel, did you get that kind of Romeo and Juliet kind of West Side Story kind yeah, of vibe about it? Yeah. Did that kind of that feel to it? Yeah, because there's a sense, particularly for Amber's parents, they don't want her to mix. They don't want her to go out. And so the idea that she could potentially be falling in love with Wade, the water guy, <laughs> it's like what you are breaking from your family heritage. If you do that, do this, what could the consequences be? Right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, yeah, it's it's a fascinating one. Is it, I don't know what you thought about the an animation because this is the mm. first time Pixar has actually been in theaters since I believe Onward, mm. which was before um, before the whole COVID um, sort of scenario kind of happened. It didn't do very well. Onward wasn't as big as I think they expected well, it to be. Well, it literally came out the week when lockdown the week that lockdown came down, and so mm. it did. Now, Onward unfortunately didn't get the run that they yeah. was expecting to get. It got a little and lost. It did, unfortunately. <laughs> what didn't go Onward? Ha, 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 ha. Hey, we tried. Oh, so we great. try it. Hey, there we go. I think, well, coming to the animation, that side, like, I love Pixar. I think they do incredible films, obviously. Like, that's what they're known for. But then, weirdly, with this one, I don't know whether it was because it was fire that they were trying to animate. And you're obviously keeping a lot of movement in that. Yeah. And I don't, it didn't, I don't know. There was, for me, there was something weird about the animation mm. because parts of the fire were, like, drawn on in an old fashioned sure. cartoon type of way and then, like, meshed with animation to keep that movement in there. 
it looked weird to me. Some of it seemed quite flat and it didn't engage me in the same way that other Pixar's oh, do. Go. This is probably not the right way to describe it, but I feel like previous, you know, Pixar movies, like your Toy Story ones and that sort oh, of yeah. stuff, there's something kind of soft and squishy about the characters. <laughs> That's whereas, right. Whereas Elemental for me didn't have that. It was right. not as, um, not as like warm and embracing in an animated sense. Without being pun, you know, because uh, her being fire hey, and obviously. There you go. Well, no, because he did. I, I think that that's one of the things that they were trying to capture is you're kind of seeing uh, the very different worlds that they were kind of existing. You kind of see kind of a Zootopia mm. feel to it, except for there's the love story that kind of happens within it all. And uh, uh, yeah, it'll be fascinating to see how Pixar does with this one. Mm. Because I mean, uh, unfortunately, I feel like they've been kind of relegated to Disney Plus throughout the past few years and so yeah. now I'm wondering if people will embrace it. I really think that it needs to be seen on the big screen yeah. to be really appreciated because it is amazing what they're able to do with this kind of building this world of yeah. the city. The city looks incredible and I think too some Pixar movies more so now have been framed as almost like statement films. They're trying right. to drive at some kind of social agenda or tackle, you know, a really big idea that when, particularly for younger families, if you're just wanting to watch a nice movie with characters that have some kind of like good moral thread within it, you know, yeah. like a, a good guy, bad guy, happy ending type movie, some of those more statement-based ones can be really challenging for some audiences to watch because then you've got to help your kids grapple with these like bigger ideas and wrestle something through as opposed to just go and enjoy, you know, a nice afternoon at the movies. I think the good thing with Elemental, while it does deal with some pretty big emotions, like one of the things I noticed, the intensity of how um, Amber and Wade fall in love, the intensity of how she feels so uh, like held by her family expectation and what she's got to do with that, even not just about falling in love, but what does she want to do with her life? Is she going to inherit the family business and do right. that? Or does she want to go and do something that she dreams about? They're really big emotions and heavy kind of things that this movie deals with at, at quite an intense level. Like they fall in love quick. She gets a temper really quick. She Like there's an intensity there. But it wasn't a movie that had any kind of overarching message that it was trying to hit you with right. or social agenda. It literally was just telling you a story of these two characters with different heritages, how do they mix and what happens there. And it's a good conversation from a cultural racial point of view potentially yeah. if you see that you know, between the lines. But aside from that, it's just a good movie that Pixar have made. I actually could almost feel the parents in the audience like a sigh of relief going, mm -hmm. oh, okay, this isn't something I'm going to have to go and try and talk to my kids about something, you know, out there in the social agenda world. I mean, it does. I mean, I think that the um, kind of the immigrant story is one that's been a part of so many stories in yeah. the past. And it's yeah. really told well here, and you can see it's mm. very personal. Um, I mean, I can you can even go back to even the biblical example. I mean, it's an immigrant story a lot of times if you think about, you know, where they're kind of going as far as the different nations throughout the Old Testament mm. and New Testament, traveling through you know, what you're able to see. So you see it's a story that's old as time yeah. as far as being able to connect with. So as far as the agenda, no, mm. I don't necessarily see it. But one thing I really loved about it even sitting there with with little kids surrounding us yeah. in the cinema was that I thought that oh this is pitched kind of old I thought it was yeah, maybe a bit yeah. old but yet these little girls that were sitting around me going but where's Wade you know <laughs> I mean like they were in it you know they were yeah. into the story and because it is beautiful yeah the characters are really appealing mm. and they've really done a great job of kind of this world building mm. that really makes it really draw you in and so for me for families if as far as for the the season mm. and looking for something that you could go out and just enjoy as a family together. Mm. I think this is definitely a, definitely a good one for that. Yeah. I liked eavesdropping on a little kids ask questions like what's an air bubble? Like I was sitting there and this little girl behind me, what's an air bubble? Cause there's this moment where they like transport through one. And then, sure. and then there was another little girl saying, mom, when are we allowed to leave? And I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. So maybe it's too long for like some of the kids, oh, yeah. but it does prompt good discussions about how people, fit together like in a in a in a city where you've got people from all different places and where seemingly our differences are going to be something that restrict each other from connecting there's actually ways around that there's always sure. ways to find connection no matter how different two people two people may seem to be yeah well and the other thing i really appreciate about pixar movies that they've done well in the past and i think they did well here mm. is that they've made also a story that a parent could be entertained by yeah it, it had a lot of the humor probably would kind of fly over over the head of children, mm. not in an offensive way, but some of the jokes you're going, oh, that's really cute. Yeah. And that they really- You relate to it in different you ways. You were able to really kind of see it. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that it definitely is one for the families and I think 
it's definitely worthwhile kind of considering as far as going out and seeing Elemental. Yeah, it's one of the better Pixar ones of late. But do you yeah. want to talk about what I know is going to be your favorite movie? The <laughs> dun, 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 well, before dun. that, before, oh yeah. We gotta wait before you yeah. do that. I want to know what your favorite Pixar movie is. Oh, I, that's I think, a I think hard the, question. I, th- I think this is because it, it's actually I, I I can't wait not not to spoil it for you, <laughs> but we are gonna get to Indiana Jones, I promise. But because um, you can see the hat and everything like that here. <laughs> but no, I really it almost kind of I, I found that know. Pixar films because they've had twenty seven, which is mm. amazing to me. But I then, need a list. Wait, 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 I need a list wait, wait, of what all What would be kind of some of your favorite movies? I mean, all the way back to Toy Story where it starts, but yeah. then you're kind of moving through Monsters, Inc. You're looking through and The Incredibles, all these different ones. Up, yeah. Wally, all Up these wasn't, different ones. Up wasn't a favorite. I liked Up. It was colorful, like the balloons. That's sure. pretty. <laughs> you <laughs> get me balloons. with the balloons. I love uh, the balloons. Monsters, Inc., I think, has to be there because the characters, the characters are incredible. Like, sure. I just... Loved that, and little Boo, and just the whole the whole thing of that is probably one of the ones that stands out a lot more. Sure. But Toy Story is great, and I'll always remember it as part of my childhood. Like, of course, the first sure. ones, but I don't I don't think it's like a favorite. Right. But Monsters Inc would be there. Big Hero Six. Oh yeah. I really liked that. Yeah, that's a tough question. It is. You can't ask me that. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I'm, I'm throwing all the tough questions at you today. I'm sorry. Yeah. Surprise, by the yeah. way. Yeah, sorry, working yeah. with me, it's always an interesting challenge. <laughs> yeah, because I know for me, it still comes back to The Incredibles. Yeah. The Incredibles is probably one of my... I love Toy Story. I love Finding Nemo. Inside Out was great, especially having three daughters. I thought Inside Out was brilliant. I just yeah. thought the, the depiction of kind of seeing the inside, the inner workings of a child's mind. Um, but still, The Incredibles... The love of family, um, what they're able to see, the devotion to one another, and actually seeing imperfect parents, but yet still perfectly loving their children mm. and loving one another, yeah. even though with these unique abilities and everything like that. I still find The Incredibles as a, a great, that was an era of Pixar mm. that I just miss. Yeah, that's probably ways. like Pixar at their best. Right, That right. kind of era. Yeah, it is, definitely. All right, so that we can get back to it, and we yeah, definitely we have to. We, we need, yeah, do the, the theme song. That's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> put, the, put the hat on, got the whip, everything yeah. like that. We're ready to go. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Indy! Give him hell, Indiana Jones. A few times in my life I've seen things. I've been tortured with voodoo. Been shot nine times. Including once by your father. Ah! Sorry. But I've been looking for this all my life. Which shockingly comes 15 years after the last one. That's right. The Crystal Skull. Like, that was one of the things in going to see this movie because I was trying to remember what the last one was and let me just recap myself on the story. To realize that that came out in 2008 right. and this is now when the next one's coming out, that was overwhelming. Well, before we get there, before we get into this movie, because we, we got to see it and it, it, I you know, I think we had different kind of views on it in those different ways, which is great. But see now, I saw, and this shows how old I am, mm. I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark in the theaters when it opened. Yeah, you know, and see, it, I saw it in the theaters when they did the like throwback nostalgia <laughs> exactly. screenings. <laughs> exactly, but it was for me... A seminal film. I mean, mm-hmm. it's one of those that you're going. It defined our generation. It defined who we were. Harrison Ford, both as Han Solo and, I mean, because he he had two franchises that Huge. he was working on, much less all the other things that he's done throughout his career. So it it was one of those films. Raiders of the Lost Ark was one of those you could almost say, all the boys of mm-hmm. that era could say all of the lines and see all of it. Yeah. So it just really had a play. I mean, do you have a favorite, or do you did you have you seen mm-hmm. all of them? Do I've you, seen all of them. I have seen all of them but I remember like I watched them on like movie nights initially the sure. older ones and then we would do movie marathons and then like I said when they did the re-releases at the cinema for the fun of it I loved it like I loved the character of Indiana Jones and then the newer ones like that's that when Shia LaBeouf entered I know he yeah. was a, he was a controversial inclu- <laughs> inclusion because it was like is he really going to take the mantle from right. Indy and what's that going to look like but i for me at the time, particularly because Shia LaBeouf was also like big off Transformers and all of oh, these sure. things, that kind of brought me into those stories again after having watched them because I wanted to see what they were going to do with this potential next generation, which they left alone yeah. like in the end. But I think they're just one of those movie franchises that fit in such an iconic space 
within like social history, cinematic history, but I also remember certain bits I wasn't allowed to watch. Like when he drinks the cup and there's like the skull face that just right. like disintegrates Melts. and things yeah. like this. It's like, okay, I got to skip this bit, put the pillow over your eyes, right. wait till you're old enough to really Eating watch the monkey that. Brains so I, the, right, those, so yeah. I remember them as these like fun adventurous films, but also ones that I wasn't necessarily allowed to <laughs> fully appreciate until I was a bit older. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. It, it's, it's so much, it's fun to kind of look back at them and then yeah. they'd be reintroduced to it, especially at this season of my life and be, it kind of, a, it was kind of almost a welcome look at, yeah, hopefully this is the end. Yeah. But uh, hopefully they, they are honor this well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We'll yeah. just kind of see how this ends up going. How about, I'll just kind of share real quick what the storyline yeah. is because kind of basically, so Indiana Jones played by Harrison Ford, a legendary hero, finds himself kind of in a new era. I mean, he's at a point of retirement. Um, he's, he's kind of, he's living as a man outside of his own element, his own time. You know, he's an archeologist that looks back at the past, but now all of a sudden he finds himself in this older age. And like, what is he, is he a relic himself and kind of, kind of feeling that out. Then all of a sudden his goddaughter shows up, you know, so his goddaughter shows up, Helena Shaw, you know, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. And she kind of tries to get him going again, trying to find this dial of destiny, which has been one of those things that her father, who is one of the fellow archaeologist friends of Indiana Jones, um, has been trying to find um, throughout their lives. And is supposed to supposedly change time or maybe change. We're not mm. sure at first what Predict it really Predict sp- fix, fix fishers in time. Fishers, fishers in, time. in time. I think well, is what they fishers. said. Fishers. <laughs> fishers, yep. Fishers Some kind time. of break in time. Yep. But obviously it has some value because it's not only Indiana Jones and his goddaughter trying to find this, but all of a sudden those from maybe a Nazi heritage or at least Mm. that background also are looking to try and find it too. Mm. And so it becomes this adventure of trying to find this dial of destiny before one of the other parties does. And of course we go on another Indiana Jones adventure. And you realize early on that you are going to have to concentrate a bit for this story (laughs) because you start to go, hang on a minute. Have they just tried to like soften Harrison Ford's face with like a Vaseline sort of a lens here or are they trying to make it look like we've time traveled? But hang on, the other actors, are they aging at the same time as him? Like there's a few time warp aspects to this storyline that do mean you need to just pay attention because they're going to piece it all together for you. I'm not going to spoil anything, but you got to take the pieces in as they come so that you know what's going on. And where they're going. This is me. I find myself, some movies I really need to concentrate. And as much as an Indiana Jones one, you should just be able to let your brain go and enjoy the ride. This one did require a little more attention than I was expecting. It definitely does. Well, because they do the whole de-aging process and all that sort Uh of thing with it. And so to see Indiana Jones as Older, a younger, yeah. Hans, I mean, a younger Harrison Ford, but not quite Harrison Ford of that era. Mm. It's kind of always kind of an interesting one. It's a little yeah. discombobulating at first. But they don't. I think what's good because watching this, I also thought a little bit of uh, Craig, um, Daniel Craig. In, oh yeah. In 007 and all of that, James Bond, how with the latest in the James Bond franchise, they kind of were making a point of how detached he was from his younger years and how much Mm. he's pushing retirement and can he still do everything he needs to do? Is it time to just let go? And watching Indiana Jones, I kind of was thinking the same thing. Like they do show that it's like this is an older indie. He's in a different kind of time. And the way they contrast, the way they sort of piece together him when he's young and then all of a sudden there he is as an older guy. You see how he's physically changed and all of this. They're really painting that picture of what he once was, he's not anymore, but what is the value of who he is to where he's at right now? Right. And he still, I think the important thing is he still does have a value. Like it's very easy to assume that with a change of life season, your value changes, yeah. but it actually doesn't. It's just how you use what makes you inherently unique and the contributions you bring, you may apply them differently, but your value hasn't actually changed. That's right. Well, and that's the thing I think they leaned into. I mean, there was two aspects of what you just said. One is that they acknowledge the fact that Indiana Jones is getting old. Mm. You know, Harrison Ford's getting old. He looks pretty yeah. good at 70. He looks great. Or 80 where he is now. And he can still tip a bookshelf and like <laughs> run over the top of it. That's right. I mean, the things he was able to do, I know, granted, he probably had stunt doubles doing a, Maybe. Good, a good portion of it, but Don't some of it, in it. <laughs> and <laughs> and but also I do think that we have to remember I mean even though we love these films they are meant to be just kind of Saturday matinee kind of mm-hmm. not supposed to that's the swashbuckling yeah. era that they they kind of came from um but what they really showed with both 
him and the Mads Nicholson character, which he is just great as the villain. Um, He's says, also a Bond villain too, so that's maybe right. that's why I was thinking about Daniel. So Jurgen Buller is uh-huh. his name, but because uh, they also de-age him a bit. But both of them, there were times when they talked about the fact that they were men outside of their own time, but they were always kind of looking back, like if I could go back. If I could just fix it or if I could go back and experience that, yeah, that somehow my life would be more fulfilled or be better. And I think what they really leaned into, and this is what I think one of the things you were trying to say, too, is that actually live the life that you've been given now. Your your value is now. You know, Mm -hmm. this is the time that you're in. Do it here. And I think, you know, not to spoil it for everybody, but Indiana Jones kind of gets there, you know, in in that way. And Mm -hmm. so it was really quite endearing to kind of see that as well as seeing some of these beloved characters that we've mm. seen over the past few decades that have been a part of our lives through the Indiana Indiana Jones franchise yeah, so to be able to kind of see them. Also some new ones too. I was yeah. curious like what you thought of um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Mm, her character has a obviously valid place in this movie as uh, Indiana Jones's granddaughter, not granddaughter, um, goddaughter, goddaughter is right. what I meant to say. So it's like, yes, that is a worthwhile you know spot for her to exist in, but I didn't feel like... I just didn't feel like I don't know. It didn't it they weren't they weren't like a bonded duo in the sense that like I think of my mind just went to the mummy, right? Where right. you've got Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weiss, like the way that they are sharing the in this mummy. adventure, the good mummy. <laughs> the way that they're sharing in this adventure, running around, like doing everything on screen and they're such a duo. Like yes, there's a love story in that one, so it's a little bit different. That was like this team sense of adventure. This one to me with Indiana Jones, they didn't I don't know what it is, but it's like they didn't feel like they were in the adventure together quite so much. And I don't know if that's because of some of the things they put in her backstory that mean there's a little bit of disconnect to uh, Indy's current sort of phase. Sure. I don't know whether that's there, but there just didn't seem to be that same type of on-screen camaraderie and Mm. it wasn't a shared adventure. Like they both seemed to have their own intentions and that was a little bit of a distraction for me. Yeah. Oh, and actually that's one of the things that kind of stood out for me too is for, I feel that Indiana Jones throughout this whole franchise has been the heart and also the moral center. Mm. Interestingly enough, you think, you kind of almost it gets depicted that he's stealing artifacts, but he's not. That's not no. what he does. He, he actually, wants them all to go to the museum. He wants them to go to the museum. He wants to make sure that they're 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 taken care of mm. and, and valued for what they are, but that people aren't profiting from them. Yeah, he has an appreciation for the history, like the historical significance, is what he really cares about as much as like finding the treasure. Right. While she was all about the money. Yeah. I mean, at least that's the way it came off. Even though you know you can see there was a bit of heart. Mm. So I did. I I found that that was kind of a little disjointing. Yeah. In, in a, in a little bit that she also she's not meant to be taking over this franchise. I think Mm-mm. sometimes people have been like going, "Oh, she's going to take it over." So, no, 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 she's definitely not. But it's but it so but she kind of adds the the counterpoint to his kind of moral moral yeah. center of kind of what he's doing. And also from a real practical point of view, and even uh, the character of Indiana Jones says this in the movie, she's meant to bring the young adventurous can climb and scale the walls right. at a pace that he just can't. Like I think that's also just practically how they're trying to balance the pace of this movie is to bring someone in like her who's going to add a dynamic and they put her as the fast-paced heroine of this movie in some respects while he obviously is still indie but it's like let's make a joke of the fact that his his knees are a little sore and like <laughs> exactly. his hips can't quite function as he they did. He has pins here, he plates pins here. here all and that. I don't like part of me is like come on guys like you don't always have to make age come across like this painful joint issue right. ridden kind of thing. It doesn't have to be that. But if they're going to try and introduce characters and balance it, like that's what they've done with this movie. But you talk of things that make it perhaps a little bit disjointed. One of the things I noticed this time around was how much of the movie is CGI or mm, like right. it's not real. And I found that a bit of a struggle because with Indiana Jones, whether they're traveling internationally or like racing across sure. open fields, whatever, there's a sense of tangible reality to his adventures. And there's something nice about that. The idea of this down to earth, dirty adventurer, <laughs> right. you know, it's something different in our age of the very pristine superhero, Indy something different. And then in this movie, so much of it is very clearly like on a green screen or on some kind of like built set, which yes, movies are on sets, right? We sure. know this, yeah. but I just felt it was so obvious in this movie right. that I was, I didn't feel like 
there's no nothing at stake when I can so clearly tell that you're in this bouncing tuk tuk racing around the streets, but no, you're not. Right. You know, it, yeah. that that was a bit off putting for me. I didn't. Yeah. I felt like I wanted to love the movie a little more, and that was kind of ruining it. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, I I can totally appreciate the fact that you want practical effects, especially mm. with something like this, yeah. opposed to where we're just kind of adding CGI. Yeah. I mean, I think the de aging process they've got to do that, opposed to putting yeah. in really bad makeup and make, make trying to make them look 100%. younger. I mean, I think it, I think it definitely makes sense. Yeah. But I, I can definitely kind of uh, I definitely yeah. appreciate especially the horse yeah. riding scene and all this sort of yeah, stuff. Like you're horse riding in a train station. We can tell like that you've, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, changed the horse's legs to make it be able to jump how it jumped. And it's like, I get it, but I just, you've done it in a way that makes me not sit in the reality of this imagined world. Right. Because right. it's so clear that it's fake. Yeah. And when they're like on top of trains and it's like, I know you're not on a train track in the middle of the mountains. What? What? I want it to feel this more is real. Practical. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just being a movie snob. I don't know. No, no, no. Oh, no. I, I, I totally, I can definitely see that, especially when. And you look back on the originals and those had yeah, to be they were. almost all of them, even the big rolling ball coming down right? had to be a real one. It, it had wasn't to be a CGI real. One. Because of also even what they were able to do back in that era. And yeah. so what we're able to do, I think sometimes it does lead to kind of maybe some lazy filmmaking mm. oh, or, but it also, <laughs> these these actors cost so much money in oh, their yeah. insurance. I can only imagine they can't get hurt. Don't they, hurt you know, anyone. Do that. I get it. I get all the reasons why they have to do it. But as the consumer at the other end, like you're taking a little bit of the magic away when yeah, we sure. clearly know. Oh, it's fake. It's fake. It, there's one thing though before before we get, kind of get done because I know where we're, we've kind of gone on a little bit. But the thing that really stood out to me that I've never noticed before, and I don't know why with with Indiana Jones, I would have thought that it would. But then this one in particular, they kept focusing on his bag, and mm. the fact that this guy has been traveling the world, he's done all these things, he's living in kind of almost squalor in this apartment that he lives in, but it's his bag, his little that, satchel, his little bag, which of course has the hat. Has the whip, has the jacket, and, and whatever it is that he else he needs to have with him on his the adventure. artifact of the day. Yeah, but it it really stood out to me because you saw it throughout the film because you're going, man, you know his life is really boiled down to that bag. I mean mm. that bag, you know, people might be carrying it for him, but he always it ends up being the bag. Are you the, thinking of him as the icon of minimalism? <laughs> not, not that as much as I don't. It made me no, actually it made me think, especially as, an, as somebody kind of on in years in certain ways of what would be in my bag you know like what mm. is it that represents you you know oh, right like your what, what are the things you're taking through life yeah well you're kind of taking through life because it, it really comes down to it's the simplest thing sometimes you think mm. you have all this stuff but really it kind of comes down to the basics and so it just kind of what would it what would it be in that yeah. for me you know could really i find a loophole and take my phone because then I have everything I have I have because you're going to want me to say you're going to want me to say I'm taking my bible well there's an app for that you're going to want me to say I'm taking my family and the photo albums right. well they're in my phone right like it's all like just I feel like just too. give me the phone a charger and some sunscreen <laughs> I think that's go. that's going to do me just fine I have everything that's it exactly <laughs> I love it oh yeah it was yeah because it definitely was one of those because we were talking about it was talking about my wife and of course you know you have to say of course my bible I've got yeah. I'm, not, I'm not even saying that low you know my bible is <laughs> going to be there uh, paper or electronic however right? you want to do it See? yeah but then also you're thinking about oh yeah but I can't take my family with but you have mm -hmm. pictures you know, mm -hmm. so you have those on your phone and yeah. all that sort of thing yeah Bill that what, what gets thrown in there I wouldn't have a whip and a hat maybe no, but I definitely maybe a Swiss Army knife. Oh yeah, there you That's go. That's then yeah. yeah. So s add Swiss Army knife to the sunscreen to the phone. There you go. Yeah. Love it. Well, that's a great question. I mean, you can definitely put it down in the comments down below. What would be in your bag if mm -hmm. you if your life is boiled down to be one satchel <laughs> that you could carry throughout your life? What would wow. what, what would be in your bag? What would that be? All right. Well, hey, we've come to kind of the end of the watch list, but I, I guess make sure that we're clear. Mm -hmm. So, would Elemental be on your watch list? Ah. <sighs> It's probably not great that I'm not I'm not a ten out of ten fan of either of this week's movies. I'm right. sorry, but I'd say I'd say <laughs> like go true. go for gold and watch the watch Elemental if you kind of just fancy you know an sure. afternoon out with the kids yeah. and maybe it's okay it's okay like I just didn't rave about it. Indiana Jones I think is fun because there's nothing like Indiana Jones at the moment. Right. There's still something unique about it. him and his way. So I I would pick Indiana Jones over Elemental. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I would for families. 
Elemental is the top of my list. I mean, I think that, I thought it was great. I thought it was a, a fun, fun film. Um, and I think it's definitely one that pretty much most age brackets could go and enjoy together. Yeah. Indiana Jones, if you're a fan, you've got to go see this. Because this is really, I think, the end of the franchise. Mm. It, they, I think they've done a nice job of kind of wrapping this up, even though it wasn't the best film out of the whole franchise, but it was good. Yeah. And so it was definitely worthwhile. So, hey, thanks. This was fun. It was fun Thank to kind you. of chat chatting about it. And so, well, we've come to the end. So make sure you subscribe to the watch list um you can do that at hope 103.2 and also uh, you can also check out our videos on youtube yes indeed and you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening and make sure you have your notifications turned on so that you never miss an episode yeah definitely do that and so uh thanks for coming along with the watch list again we look forward to spending some more time with you again so make sure you grab your popcorn check out the films that we've talked about look at them through the lens of faith and we'll see you next time on the watch list